Welcome 3D students. In this video I'm going to show you how to download a texture from Polyhaven and apply it to an object like a castle wall. So let's get started. So you can see here I have my castle wall and I want to apply a nice uh, stone texture to it. So my current favorite website to get textures from is Polyhaven and when you go to Polyhaven you can hover over this assets link and look at textures and there's all sorts of textures in here uh, we are concerned with a brick texture so I'm going to go to uh, brick and then I'm going to look at wall and this gives me lots of choices I think that I'm going to pick um, this one and once you pick it you have to come over here and make some changes uh, 2k is about what we need we need to change this to zip and then once this pops up we need to uncheck this uncheck this uncheck this one uncheck this one leave this one checked leave this one checked uncheck one of the normal maps leave the roughness checked if it's checked and uncheck this one if it's checked and then we just click download and once you do that I have my Chrome set up to ask me where to put my textures. I'm just going to let it go into my downloads folder. And once it's done, you'll see this little thing pop up here. Click the folder icon and that will bring up this little window here. And this takes me to my downloads folder and it shows me the folder that I just downloaded. I'm going to double click this folder. This is a compressed folder and inside here you'll find this folder. Double click that one and these are the textures that we now need to take into our project folder. So to open up a new window in the Windows Explorer what you need to do is hit Control N and that'll open up a new window. And then we can navigate to the place where we want to put these textures and just drag them in. So let's go to um, my one Click OneDrive into my 3DMA folder and in there I have a castle project folder and all your textures should always go in the scene assets images folder of your project folder and then all we have to do is drag these from the downloads folder into our project folder and then we can close this window. I'm going to leave this one open and you'll see why in just a second. So now I'm going to open up my material editor I'm going to bring that folder back up and I'm going to drag these. I'm just going to select them and drag them into my material editor slate right here, just like this. Now we can't drag them in there from the project from the downloads folder. We had to expand them and put them in the project folder structure in order to be able to do that. Next I'm going to use a physical material. And I'm going to name this material wall 01 and then we need to connect these to their proper nodes over here. So this one, if you click on it, you can see its name down here in the settings. This is the diffuse map. And the diffuse map always goes to the base color node on this material. This next one is the displacement map. You can see its name right there. This one goes to the displacement node, which is down at the bottom here. This one that's kind of a blue color will always be what's called the normal map and it needs to go to the bump node but it can't go directly to the bump node because it's not a bump map it's a normal map so we need something to translate this map for the bump node so if we click and drag off the bump node let go go to general we're going to select normal bump and this is our translator and we'll just connect that to the normal node this one is the roughness map and it just goes to the roughness node. The final thing I would encourage you to do is select your physical material and zero out the reflections here because we don't want our wall to be shiny. Now we can just simply apply this to our wall and we can close the material editor. Now this doesn't look right because all of these polygons that are sort of smeared here are new polygons that we extruded and the computer doesn't know what to do with them. It knows what to do with the original box. 
You can see that, but this, these it doesn't know what to do with. So we have to tell the computer how to project these properly onto this object we've created. And to do that, we need to select it, make sure you have sub-object modes turned off, go to the modifier list, and we're going to select something called a UVW map. And when we do, our texture changes. There are different types of mapping projection in the UVW map. There's planar, there's cylindrical, there's spherical, shrink wrap. Box is the one that we want because our wall is basically a box. And once we apply it, you can see that it is perfectly fine. Now, a couple of things you need to know. One of them is that you need to um, make sure that these three numbers, length, width, and height, are the same. Because if they're not, let me show you what happens. They'll distort your texture. If your texture is too big or too small for your wall, then you need to adjust it here in the tiling. And the tiling repeats the texture over the surface. Right now the tiling is 1. If I want my bricks to be smaller, then I need to increase this. And the only thing you need to understand about doing this is that the tiling numbers need to be roughly the same otherwise you'll distort the texture again as if these were not the same. If you want your texture to be smaller or bigger then you would make these numbers less than one. And the final thing that I would do is come up here and finish this with an edit poly at the top of the stack and now your wall is ready to copy and build your castle enclosure. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.